Uh, so, and Phil from St. Paul. All right, so hey, welcome here, everybody. And so the plan tonight is to really go through the program Solarium. It's an incredible program. The more I use it, the more I found, find out how to use it. And if you haven't used it, I think you'll really like this, um, what it can do to help you understand and explore the night sky, especially on, at least here in the Minnesota, the Arctic cold, dark, and I say cold and dark and cloudy uh, winters that we've been having. All right, so hopefully that's working and you can see me okay uh, with that. So um, again, welcome. And so the the goal for tonight is how to use to learn. So what are some of the things you can do with it? Well, here's just, I'm just going to go through a couple of them. Uh, here's the Milky Way Arch. And um, oh, I'm just looking at everyone checking in on the chat. It's wonderful. So you have a minute. Yeah, please do let us know where you're coming in from. Uh, so here's the Milky Way Arch. And um, uh, you know, this is looking east, obviously, and you can, uh, Stellarium is wonderful for helping you understand when and where to, uh, to, to, to set this type of a shot up. Another one is to just to explore the different constellations. There's 88 constellations, as you probably know, wonderful way to uh, navigate around the night sky. And Stellarium has all this stuff built in to, um, it's, uh, a repertoire to help you, uh, understand what's going on with that. And then here's some deep sky objects. Look at this. This is the Seagull Nebula. And as you can see here, it shows you a, uh, you know, an image of the Seagull Nebula uh, built into the database. And if you look over on the left, look at all that, all those facts and figures, everything you could possibly want to know about this um, object. Uh, there, this, it's a very convenient way of looking things up if you ever need to find something out about something. And then here's another one. This is the one that really precipitated this webinar is if you look carefully, you can see that red box. And what that red box represents is the outline of a frame that you can capture with your camera using a 500 millimeter telephoto lens. And so I want to really show you how to use a Stellarium to not only explore the night sky, but how to photograph it and what you can expect to see with your camera and your particular, uh, your particular lenses that you might have. All right. So first of all, how do you access this amazing free program, uh, free most of the time? And here are three, at least three different ways to go about doing it. In the upper left, you can see this, these are all screenshots. You can see the screenshot for the free uh, web version. So you can actually just use, go to a, a website and use uh, Solarium uh, on that website for free, as long as you have internet access. And that works really well. At the bottom left, you can see a screenshot from uh, the desktop app for um, the Apple, uh, for the Mac, for the Mac, this is for a MacBook. And this is something that you can download. Again, this is free, if I remember correctly. And nice thing about this is you can use this offline um, as compared to the internet access version. And on the right is, of course, there's the cell phone, a smart device. I use the one for an iPad. This is the uh, iPhone version. This is a paid app, but it works really well. And again, you can download this and use this offline. So how do you down, how do you download that, Mike? You might be saying to yourself, well, you just go to stellarium.org, and this is the screen that you would see. And this is I should say this is a it's a free program because it's an open source program that developers and programmers from all around the world have contributed to. And so, broad props to them. Thank you for doing that to all of you who have contributed to it. And uh, I just out of the corner of my eye noticed that Suresh. Thank you, Suresh. Uh, says there's a free app for the Android. So way to go for that. So check that out as well. And so you go to solarium.org. And what you can see here, if you're interested in the, uh, this is the, the download, the desktop version. So you can go to the Google Play uh, Store and get the Android version, go to the App Store, um, the, the Apple App Store and download the, the iPhone, iPad version. And these, when, when you go to the solarium.org, these things right here are the download links or the internet links. So first off, if you click right there where it says Stellarium Web, that'll just take you to the uh, the website. So you can just, as long as you have internet access, like I say, you can go ahead and just start using it uh, straight up using that that link. If you want to download it onto your, um, hey, Hans, how are you? <laughs> you want to, I'm trying to, do, uh, to catch everyone. And, and I, one of the things about these, about these webinars, is I always feel like I'm going to a party and I so look forward to them because I see some familiar names and I know your faces and uh, I know you're there. So again, it's just great that, to, to you know, know that we have this brief connection as, as such that we do. All right, back to the thing. So this uh, link will allow you to download the uh, desktop version and then you can use it from your desktop without any need of the internet access. Okay, so let's just go through what, what we can do with this thing. So basically when you open up the, um, this is all with the desktop version. 
you open the thing up and this is what you see. I opened this a few nights ago as I was preparing for this and uh, it was in the evening and it's just like, okay, well, <laughs> now what do I do? There's some stuff in the upper right hand corner and that's about it. Well, when you're first setting this up, I want to also say that when I open this up on my MacBook, I have to minimize the screen. It automatically takes over my screen and in doing so becomes um, inoperable. I don't know what, why that is. It's a bug. Uh, I just minimize my screen and I can have a separate window that I can move around. It works just fine. All right. So here's the thing. If you've never used this before, you might be a little mystified as to what you're supposed to do. What you do is you bring your mouse down. This is on, again on the desktop. You bring your mouse down over in that general region of the screen. And what happens is this sidebar pops out. And look at that. It's got all these tools in it. It's kind of hidden. It makes sense once you know it's there. But unless you know it's there, it's kind of invisible. So I want to go through this um, the sidebar. There's one on the bottom as well. But let's go through the sidebar you know, briefly so you can see what this does. And my hope is tonight that I can uh, I can um, do some, some live uh, live demonstrations. So I'm seeing that Gretchen is saying, is it me or is the mic frozen? Oh, no, I hope it's, sorry, Gretchen, I hope it's just you. I hope it's not me, but I'll just keep plunging ahead. Um, uh, in any event, so you, let, let's go through each of these tools and see what they do. So the first tool here is the location window. So this particular tool, oh, it was you. Okay, great. <laughs> awesome, Gretchen. So this tool is just, where are you? And I'll go through how to use this, but basically what you can do and this is really handy is you can, first of all, tell the program where you are, um, Minneapolis or St. Paul, Minnesota, for example, or where you'd like to be, um, you know, uh, Reykjavik in Iceland or uh, uh, Palm View, Texas or Forest Lake, Minnesota or uh, Petoskey, uh, Michigan. I'm looking at or Santa Barbara, uh, California, any place, Chicago, um, Illinois. You can type in a, a city or a nearby city and place the camera there to see what the sky looks like from that location. And that can be very handy as you're planning your, your trips. The next window is simply what date and time. And Rima's dialing in from Kuwait. Hello, Rima, bravo. Uh, Death Valley, California, Julie. I, have to, I don't know if you're there for the Dark Sky Festival. Focus, Mike, focus. All right, so the date and time uh, button here on the left just allows you to say, what does the sky look like at a particular date and time, obviously, so not too complicated. This one is, there's a lot to it. I'll show you a couple of the my favorite uh, adjustments to make here, but this allows you to kind of customize what you see on the screen as you're using uh, Stellarium. Now this search um, tool is a very powerful one and it allows you to find an object or a constellation or a planet um, in the night sky. So this is really useful in determining if something is visible at a particular date and time and location. And if it is where you might be able to find it in the sky and what it's gonna look like. This, these last two um, buttons, I don't really use a lot. This is a uh, kind of a configuration, as you can see, window. Don't really use that a lot. Astronomical tools. I'm mostly an astrophotographer, so I don't do a lot of this type of stuff. But they're there if you are, if you care to pursue um, uh, these other uh, other things. And then this, and this help uh, resources. It's a help resource, so check it out. All right. So now the bottom row. So that's the left hand set of tools. Along the bottom row. If you hover your mouse at the bottom side of this window, this is what you'll see. You'll see these little things that show up along the bottom. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show this particular view of the uh, the, the, the Milky Way, uh, the summer Milky Way, you might say, from the northern hemisphere middle latitudes, and use this as a way to illustrate how some of these di different uh, buttons show up. And so this is, again, this, the view that I see, I, that I get from my, uh, uh, from my uh, desktop when I open up Stellarium. And, dial it into this type of a time and date. And if you see, you can see the stars. And if you're familiar with the night sky, you'll recognize the constellations. But if you hit this particular button on the lower left, if you look carefully at your screen, it may or may not be visible through this particular webinar format. I hope that it is. I had some concerns about this. But if you look very carefully, I think you might be able to make out the very small and faint constellation lines that link the 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 prime the major stars within the constellations that you know the the primary the, the brightest stars so you can see here Sagittarius Scorp Scorpius you can see the bottom part of Ophiuchus and uh, and so forth and so on so that's a useful thing and then if you click the next button as well you can see uh, the uh, the names which is helpful again there they are and that can be helpful in, in determining if there is an object in oh excellent okay so you can see the lines okay good. 
So if there is an object is, let's say, for example, you know that, um, you know, Mars is in a particular constellation, you can go to that constellation and, and then have a good chance of finding Mars. And then this is where you can see this beautiful artwork. And I have to say, this is kind of in a little bit in the eye of the beholder. Um, because when I look at Scutum, for example, the first thing that comes to my mind isn't necessarily a shield. And, you know, so, yeah, so it's anyway, it's kind of one of these things that if you go to, what's fascinating too is that um, uh, Stellarium has the ability to allow you to look at the different constellations from different cultures from around the world. And this is absolutely fascinating. So uh, that's another sort of uh, ancillary option that's available to you. The, um, uh, the different colors, uh, Judy's asking about the different colors. So the, the, <laughs> the ones that you can see here are uh, stars versus constellations versus meteor showers. So it's so it can, it can be a little bit confusing. But so, for example, if you think back to this one that I showed at the opening um, slide, this is the constellation Cygnus, and you can see a couple of the main stars. You can see the outline and the artwork. It's this beautiful swan that's flying down the Milky Way. All this good stuff. All right, so I'm going to turn that off. And here I've turned off. This this might go to Judy's question. Whoops. Um, Originally, uh, we had, I don't know if you remember, okay, if you see here, you can see the, um, uh, there's some sort of a turquoise, the Ophiuchids and the June Scutids. Those are meteor showers, very minor meteor showers. And what this button right here does is it looks like a little meteor shower, the meteor is raining down. That turns that off. So for some reason, that's automatically on. And uh, this, this turns this off when, when I load up the system. And so now let's look at another, a couple of things that uh, stay with me on this one is uh, this is how astronomers navigate around the night sky. This may or may not be useful, but I think you'll find it to become useful as you uh, journey along in your journey of astronomy and astrophotography. So there's two main um, uh, coordinate systems that, that we all use. And this one is the latitude and the longitude of the night sky. Um, instead of latitude and longitude, it's called right ascension and declination but there's an exact parallel. So for example, if you look at the star Antares, which is shown there in the screen, I've shown here the right ascension, it's in hours, <laughs> oddly enough, 16 hours and 29 minutes and 24 seconds. And then the um, declination is uh, negative 26 degrees, 25 minutes and 55 hours. So what this says is this position never changes. It's essentially, where is Paris? I mean, the latitude and longitude of Paris is the latitude and longitude of Paris. And the right ascension and declination, or the RA and deck of Antares, is this. And that never changes. So this is like a coordinate that you can aim your telescope there. If you can look up the uh, coordinates for an object or anything, and you aim your equipment there, and you will find it, because that's where it is. And as you can imagine, as the night sky appears to move during the night, um, these... Uh, these coordinates never change, but these objects do move. Now, and so, and so for example, if we turn our, so this is facing south, and it, the, uh, these coordinates are based on, are, are, are centered on the south celestial pole, which is, for those of us in the northern um, horizon, below the horizon, northern, <laughs> northern hemisphere below the horizon, if we turn around in the northern hemisphere and look north, you can see the north celestial pole, which is at an um, out, at a angle above the horizon equal to your latitude. And if you look very carefully at the center of that thing, you can see the bright star Polaris, which, as you can see, is not quite at the center of uh, centered on the north celestial pole, but it's close enough to be a good approximation for uh, for north. But these circles would represent, for example, the uh, the appearance of star trails. If you were to make a circular star or the circles of star trails uh, facing north. So that's kind of an interesting thing. So now if we go back to. Um, facing south, now we're looking at south, these would also make star trails, but they'd be arcs over the southern horizon. But now I'm going to show you the second type of coordinate system, uh, again, using the same view. So here's Antares looking south at this particular date and time. And this is the um, an altitude azimuth based coordinate system. And what this does is it's based on you. So when you are looking at an object in the sky, you know, when you look at that object, what compass direction are you facing? And how high above the horizon is it? And obviously that constantly changes as things move throughout the night sky, their altitude and azimuth constantly change. But in this instance, you can see that at this moment in time, Antares is just a little bit west to south. So it's got an azimuth of 187 degrees and it's about 26 degrees above the horizon. And it's gonna start coming down as it starts to set in the west. So anyway, those are a couple different uh, grids that you can find helpful if you're looking for a really obscure object, maybe a very faint comet, 
and someone tells you the coordinates of that comet, um, this will help you find it. So hopefully that's a, a thing. Now, here's another interesting thing is if you look at this, if you look carefully at this view, you can see that the Milky Way is visible, but it's uh, a little bit faint. And if what you can do is if you hit the button that I've indicated there, that actually disables the atmosphere. So now you're, you're looking as if you're in, you know, <laughs> the Atacama Desert in Chile where there's no, the atmosphere is very clear. There's no light pollution whatsoever. And you can go one step further and just remove the horizon altogether. So now you're an astronaut. You're just floating in space. And in fact, if you zoom out, it's like literally there's the sun. You know, there's no atmosphere. So you can see things right next to the sun. It's a very fantastic. Uh, this, this is a whole lot of fun. So be careful. You know, hold on to your chair if you, if you get into this mode. Because um, that's a lot of fun. So I'm going to put the, the horizon back on. I'm going to put the light and the atmosphere back on and go back to our uh, view facing south. All right. What else do we have? Well, what else we have is if we hit this button right there, that looks like a, gal a galaxy, that will um, give you the names and the uh, types of the deep sky objects, you know, star clusters, globular clusters, open clusters, uh, reflection nebulae, emission nebulae, supernova, rev supernova remnants, galaxies, and so forth. So many different things to explore, and this helps you to identify those. And if you look a little bit off to the right, there's a little, I don't know if you can see it, but right... Um, Let's see, right, let me bring my mouse over to it. I didn't indicate it, but right here, there's a little eyeball type shape. I think you can see that. If you click on this, it basically goes into a night mode, which can be helpful if you're using this outside. Um, so back to daytime mode. And then what's the last thing I have here? There's something important I wanted to say here. Don't see it. Oh, and then this is the, um, this is the cell phone version of the app. So in this particular case, because you have a cell phone, which is uh, it's a mobile device, you can actually, if you click this particular icon on the mobile app, this actually um, allows you to hold your uh, camera up to the sky and you can actually like move it around and, and you know, use it to identify objects. So that's all pretty cool. All right, so now let me get to the part that um, I want to, uh, uh, that was really kind of uh, eye-opening to me. Like I've heard about this and I've seen this used a few times. I've tried using it, but I finally cracked it. I really wanted to, to share this with you. So let's look at this region of the uh, of the winter night sky and this is kind of what we have uh, right now and this is going back to our opening view of solarium here it is and you can see these uh these little symbols up in the upper right hand corner so if you click on that one right there the one that looks like a little wrench you get this window right here oculars and this is where you can actually tell solarium what your imaging equipment is and you can use this for telescopes but you can also use this for cameras that's what i want to show you here so the first thing you may want to do is to uh, click on the tab. There's all these different tabs. Click on the tab for sensors. And, um, you know, this is where you would enter in if you have a full frame camera or a, a crop sensor or, or what have you. You can go online. And the key thing here is if you if you look right on these, um, let's make sure you can see this. Oops, I'm going to move this out of the way. Oh, there we go. Yeah, if you, whoops, I'm on back here. There we go. So if you click, if you click on these, um, these little, uh, these, these fields right here, you can actually uh, see, you know, the, you know, the number of pixels, the chip width, the chip height and all that sort of stuff. And the way you, um, you add that to your, uh, the way you add that to your um, repertoires, there's a little add button here on the lower left-hand corner. So that's all there is to that. Once you do that, then you can, you might think this is what tripped me up originally and you know potentially someone can help me out with this but i originally thought well i'm going to add, add in the, the information about my lenses didn't have a lot of uh, success with that so instead um i went to this telescopes um <laughs> believe it or not uh window and there when i enter in the uh the focal length and the, the, the diameter of uh, my lens uh this worked out beautifully so this is what you want to do so what you can see here is i've actually entered in uh the information for 14 millimeter lenses all the way out to 500 millimeter lenses. And so with any of those lenses, you can now simulate what the field of view is. So for example, here is that Andromeda galaxy uh, image I showed originally. And this red frame around the galaxy is actually the field of view that you would get with my camera or your camera, if you have the same one, and a 500 millimeter lens. You can see how I've uh, clicked on this 500 millimeter lens option after clicking on this um, this little eyepiece looking thing in the uh, upper right hand corner. And so now check this out. When you compare what you actually would, what Stellarium tells you you're gonna see with what you see, it's pretty darn close. 
And so this is um, really helpful in trying to figure out some of the cool things that you can photograph with your camera in the night in the night sky from an astrophotography point of view. So let's let's look at a couple of examples. So here are uh, here's Orion's Belt. You can see the Flame Nebula, the Horsehead Nebula, a bunch of really cool stuff here. This is with a 500 millimeter lens. So this might this might make a really nice shot with a 500 millimeter lens. Suppose you will have a 400 millimeter lens. Well, then you have this. If you have a uh, 300 millimeter lens, now you can frame up, um, you know, the Orion Nebula, uh, Running Man Nebula right just there. You can get Orion's Belt, Flame Nebula again. Uh, now, if you have a 200 millimeter lens, you can start to get in some of the other, you know, a little bit of Barnard's Loop in there. 135 millimeters. This is a really nice shot of Barnard's Loop with the a really very rich molecular cloud region of uh, Orion. You can, of course, adjust this. Uh, if you go to 105 millimeters, now you can get even more of the uh, nebulosity around Orion, especially if it's a fast lens. Uh, 70 millimeters, you can include the Rosette Nebula over here. You can start to get a little bit of the structure of the Milky Way. Um, 50 millimeters, you can get more of the, uh, there's some other faint nebula in the uh, um, above uh, of, uh, uh, Orion here. Uh, you can get the full, you can actually frame up the full constellation of Orion. And you can really play around to these different orientations. Um, boy, time is just zipping right away, isn't it? Now you can start to get into the nebulae in Auriga and um, <laughs> the, yeah, the Milky Way. You can get Gemini. You can start to get the Winter Hexagon. Uh, here's the Winter Hexagon. You can have the Capella, you know, um, the Gemini twins, Procyon, Sirius, Rigel, you know, all the way around. And uh, then if you go to a 20 millimeter, you can start to line up the Milky Way. So you can really get to see, and here's a 14 millimeter lens. You can start to imagine what the, the foreground would look like. So there's a lot of different possibilities here. And I, I would like to get to a, uh, a demo of, um, of what we've got here. I'm going to come back here and have a look at the chat. And so, okay, this is all good. Are these camera settings available We're using only your phone? I know, Andy, I, I'm not sure if these, I, the answer is if you're only using your phone, I don't know that there is an ocular view for that. I haven't been able to find that on my phone. So that's a great question. So I, I think the answer is no. All right. So um, before I get into the live demo in the last few minutes, let me just, uh, again, for those of you just joining, if you want to find out more about this stuff, uh, this is my website, mikeshawphotography.com. A uh, bunch of stuff that's available, a bunch of learning resources on how to use, uh, you know, planet, how to use solarium, how to use a planosphere. Um, you know, I've got my books. There's all this is in there too. The uh, complete guide to landscape astrophotography, uh, creative nightscapes and time lapses. And the other thing I wanted to point out is, oh, and this is by my workshops that are currently underway this year in uh, 2022. We've uh, just uh, wrapped up one at the end of August or end of August at the end of uh, January. I don't know what's going on. It's a crazy world in here. Uh, the other cool thing is happening is um, you might want to consider joining the uh, Nightscaper Conference in Kanab, Utah, in, uh, end of April. It's a fantastic event. There's going to be, I think, 300 people there. Uh, I've had the great honor to be invited to speak there, along with a bunch of other real, kind of amazing folks there. So it's just going to be a wonderful event. So if you do go there, it's just nightscaper.com, and you can you know, use my name as a reference. And, of course, if we're not already connected on social media, Super easy, just Mike Shaw Photography on Instagram and Facebook and Mike Shaw Photo on uh, on Twitter. Okay, so let's do that. And now what I want to do is to, um, let's see here. Um, okay, so Suresh is confirming that the, the oculars are only on the uh, desktop version. So now let's just go over to um, Solarium. Here we go. And and here it is. Okay, so now it's it's nighttime. Uh, so I'm going to zoom out a little bit. This might be hard to follow because you can't really see what I'm doing much. But let me just illustrate. So here's my mouse. I think you can see that. And I'm going to come over to the lower left. And there's that thing that pops out. You see how it does that? It just kind of pops out. And then if I come down to the bottom, this just kind of pops up like that. So the first thing I, I usually do is I go to the location window, tell it where I, it, where I am, the date and the time. That's pretty obvious. But this one here, let me show you something right here. You click on the sky and viewing options. And the one thing that I always do is the first thing that comes up is it says sky. And where it says Milky Way brightness saturation, I take that from one to three. And the moment you hit three, you see how it made the Milky Way kind of pop? So that's a lot. And then I just close that. So that's all of a sudden much more, um, it becomes a much more visible uh, Milky Way than before. I can then come down here and I can turn off the atmosphere and that 
<laughs> that was even more. So this is basically simulating light pollution. There's, there's so many different things we can explore here. I just wanted to show you that. I can change the date and the time. So let's suppose that we wanted to go to summertime. So this is uh, 2022, February. Let's suppose we wanted to go to, I don't know, July uh, in the summertime. And now we start, we turn around and we look, oh, here's the summer Milky Way. Look at that. Hello, old friend. So um, this is kind of fun uh, if, uh, you know, <laughs> if you're really in the need for a, a Milky Way fix. So this is how you might line up, you know, that panorama shot that we were talking about. Let's suppose I wanted to search for an object. I could go to, I could hit in the search window. I could type um, M84. So I, I type that in and it takes me to this mysterious object, which is this wonderful um, uh, galaxies of Markarian's chain. See these uh, group, these are all galaxies. Look at these, these are all individual galaxies. What? This is incredible. Mike, what's going on with that? Each one of these is a Milky Way. This is one of those phenomenal things about the night sky. Let's pull in our ocular. I'm gonna go up to here. I'm going to say I'm going to five. Look, I can actually photograph these with a, this is a 500 millimeter lens. What are we doing inside? Let's get outside and shoot this thing. Um, so this is, uh, again, one of these examples of these mysterious objects that um, uh, you can search for. And so let's look for this guy, M57. Oh, look at that. Now, this is a really small thing. So this isn't really that easy to shoot with a, <laughs> a telescope or a, a, a camera. But um, there it is. Now, of course, if we wanted to just search for a constellation, I don't know, let's, let's search for Orion. So I do that. Um, and then it swings out here. And now in the summertime, it's, it says, look at this. This is interesting. It's telling me that Orion is below the horizon. Well, that's fine. I, um, I can turn the horizon, I can turn the sky off. <laughs> so now I'm looking through the earth and there's Orion right just there. We can all recognize it. And again, you can see the Orion Nebula that we were talking about earlier. Let's go up and look at the Flame Nebula. So again, this is with a 500 millimeter lens. Uh, so this is the type of shot that you could imagine capturing with a, uh, if you wanna, you can play with the orientation of this. You can just turn it, I'm just clicking up here in the upper right hand corner. A lot of different things to do. So, wow, time goes by fast. So I'm gonna come back to chat and see that uh, there's some, any questions here. So, all right, well, look, I wanna, I always wanna keep these two, uh, let me stop turning that off. So it's back to me, hello, everybody. So yeah, a lot of stuff you can do with this. and. Um, I don't know if you have any qu questions I could uh, hit on the last couple of minutes here. Let me just have a quick look here. Um, so there's some good uh, uh, back and forth. Uh, so there's an ocular tab in the Android app. Excellent, Ron. Thank you for that. Okay. Steve has not seen the lower menu bar. You just have to kind of come down and maybe hover it and maybe it'll pop out. Um, maybe I do need it to, I, I thought this was going to take about 10 or 15 minutes and I was going to spend the rest of the time doing a live demo. Um, so Suresh says, Bruce, you'll need to preload the camera sensor info. Yeah. And then, yeah. So, uh, Suresh's comment is right on board there. So when you type in the sensor information for your camera, if it's an APS-C or, uh, micro four, whatever, micro four thirds or whatever type of camera sensor you have, um, it'll, it does store that. And then you, um, can uh it, it you could use that as a basis for um for your uh for your simulations but again i mean really this is one of those things that you know turn that milky way brightness up to three or four uh zoom in and just like cruise around the night sky i'm, I'm sure you'll find some objects that maybe you didn't realize were there and now you have a, a way to estimate how big they are uh, as you saw some of the planetary nebulae those little small round things are pretty tiny so they're going to be really difficult to, um, to photograph, but we still have a, a couple of months left of the, uh, you know, the winter uh, constellations, you know, the, the winter hexagon and so forth. We're coming into galaxy season. So those galaxies are uh, a thing. So Carol's asking, will it be covering Stellarium at the Nightscaper conference? Not like this. I mean, great question, but no. I mean, this is um, the, the two, well, I mean, I should back up. No, not really like this, but the two talks I'm gonna be giving, one of them is gonna be talking about just journeying through the universe uh, and visiting things. So there's, so, uh, there's some aspects of that. And then the second talk is going to be planning. So it'll be a component of that, but along with a, a bunch of other stuff. But, um, but yeah, if you found this really useful and you'd like to have some more of Stellarium, then I'd be real happy to do another one of these on some of the uh, finer aspects of it. But again, I'm glad we had the chance to, uh, to hit the high points. And um, thanks so much for joining us. As always, it's, I want to keep these to uh, 30 minutes so we can get on with the rest of our evening. But again, thank you, everyone. I'm going to I pulled the plug here momentary, but as always, it's so great to see all of you. And um, 
uh, boy, I tell you, just a big hug for me to all of you. How can I say we're going stir crazy here? It's been a long, dark, dark, long, dark, uh, gray winter, but spring is right around the corner. And um, um, yeah, so anyway, uh, Rima, I, I don't even know what time of the um, night of the day it is in, in Kuwait. I should look that up, but it is probably like about two in the morning. Anyway, um, thank you all. Uh, have a wonderful night. And uh, again, if you have great su any suggestions for upcoming seminars, it's still a little bit fluid. So thanks so much again. And we will be in touch. So thanks so much again, everybody. Have a great night. Um, take care.